Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to give you some tips for coloring with your Prismacolor pencils, getting some nice blends going. And I'll use two different types of pencils together. On the left are my Prismacolors, and that's a set of 24 colors. And on the right-hand side is a set of 10 that I just got at the dollar store. And the verse that I'll be illustrating is Jeremiah 10, 6, No one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. The Bible that I'm working in has an image that's just a general graphic. It's not something that is supposed to illustrate that verse necessarily. It's just a beautiful one that's printed in half tones in this illustrator's note-taking Bible. And I love coloring these because the lines kind of disappear, and then it ends up being just a beautiful pattern without big old lines that look like a coloring book, which is kind of cool. Now, that first section that I colored was the dollar store pencils. This one is Prismacolor. And what I do is put down the yellow, or you can put out, down whatever color first, and color halfway up the image and then a little past it and get lighter with the pencil, and then start at the top and color back into the yellow, the second color, and start to get lighter as you get out to that edge. And then between the two of them, you end up with a nice blend going across them. You can go back and forth over it. If you press too hard, you can end up with a waxy buildup first though. And that's one of the things that can become a challenge. We're trying to get so much color out. So I go in lots of light layers with a super sharp pencil. And I'm speeding this up because this is all basically the same in this section and we will do some more slow blending later too. But look what happens when I take a white Prismacolor and it doesn't work as well with you know, a white one in the dollar store type pencils, but in the Prismacolor, there's enough wax put off the pencil that it works well to just go over the colors with your white pencil. So here I'm gonna go over the whole thing that I've done in this yellow and orange color with the white pencil and look how beautiful I can get all of these blends to go. And I've alternated between the lighter dollar store pencils and my heavier colors, my stronger colors in the Prismacolor. And that gives me a whole different look to it rather than just coloring it all in the same brand of pencil. And the 24 set of pencils that I have here that I showed you is the set that I used in the book, Bible Journaling Made Simple. So I did not have fancy, fancy stuff when I made that book. I'm, well, I shouldn't say I don't have. I didn't use fancy stuff. I wanted to be able to make the book with something simple and affordable and not a huge deal. So now I'm going to use my Prismacolor, my dark brown pencil, and I'm going to create some dimension on this section. And it's the dimension for this one, I'm just going to put across the whole section. I put really dark color right along the edge of what I'm going to call a cloud in this design. You'll see when I zoom out, there's no rhyme or reason to this design necessarily. It's just a beautiful graphic and I'll be adding my text to it myself. But I'm starting with heavier color right along the edge and then I'm, gonna, I'm getting lighter and lighter as I get away from it and that's going to make it look like there's a shadow under that cloud portion up at the top. I'm adding a little bit of orange so that I get go from the brown to the orange as a little bit of the blend and later on I'll go over it with the white again. But remember when you go over layers and layers and layers like this, the white I went over pretty heavy so it's a little more challenging to add this kind of dimension afterward. So that's one of the reasons I'm struggling a little bit with trying to get it even in an earlier coat. I would have been better off to wait and do the white after I was all finished with this section. But on the bottom, I can do the same thing, the, the dark brown at the very edge and then kind of slowly move it up, up the shape. So then I get that, that look that looks like this shape is behind the white cloud that's gonna be on the top and the bottom. And it works relatively well to go over that again, but I do have some waxy buildup, so you do want to be careful in doing that kind of thing. Now these little things, they might be leaves, but I'm going to call them flowers, so I'm going to do them in red and purple. And every other one I'm going to do with the inexpensive pencils, and I get a very light look to them. But I'm doing the same thing to do the blending. I'm going from the one of the colors at one end and getting slowly across the middle, getting it lighter. And then from the other end, I'm starting with the other color heavier and then slowly working my way toward the other side. And when you're doing it with two different brands of pencil like this, it's kind of fun to play with the two of them in the design itself. 
and, you know, doing your flowers so that you end up with different different types of flower petals on them. Whatever it is that you're drawing, whatever kind of pattern you're making, you can get a whole different look for color like this. These almost start to look transparent to me after a while, which is kind of cool. But again, I can go right over top of it all with that white pencil, blend it all together, and it kind of looks cool. It came out really nice. And I'll do that for all the flowers across the entire piece. For the outside of this cloud shape that's drawn on here, I'm putting that darker color right at the edge. And you can see how much easier it is when I'm not doing it over top of that waxy buildup. And I can put my, my blue all the way to the inside edge and get darker and then just lighten up and use that pencil lighter and lighter as it gets off to the outside edge and I can get a soft blend going off of the design. As I go out toward the right hand side though, toward the edge of my paper, I'm actually going to get nice and solid because I want that whole outside edge to be nice solid blue and have that that cloud kind of coming out from the out, outer edge and only have that soft edge on the left hand side. And I'm just going to go over it a couple different times and try to get it somewhat even because if you get it somewhat even, the white pencil over top of it works really nicely. So then when I go over it, you can see how nice and smooth that white pencil is going to make that blue background. Very, very cool. Just keep an eye on your waxy buildup. What I did here as well was I did the blue that goes behind these stems first because if I were to put the green on the stem and then try to color the blue over top of it, I would risk the dragging the blue into the green. So I kind of advised taking that, that blue and going right through something if your color on top is going to be darker. If you're going to be using a lighter color on top and a darker color behind, you would do the opposite. So you want your darker color to go down last. After I finished all of my coloring, which you can see that the artwork here doesn't make anything other than a pretty design, I'm adding my lettering onto this. And with pictures like this that don't have any lettering already on them, you can add your own Bible journaling. And these pictures don't always, in this particular Bible, they don't always go with something in terms of illustrating the verse in this particular Bible. They're just beautiful, gorgeous designs. And I love the whole idea of adding something to them to tie them to the scripture rather than just doing the coloring. And I was really pondering while I was doing the coloring that there really is none like the Lord. There is no one like him. My final touch to this was to add a highlight. And I'm using a white gel pen to just go over the top. It's a little tough sometimes over a waxy color, so you need to be careful as well. Practice with that. And I'm adding almost a, a comma shape, like a sideways comma, across the top of each of my flowers. And it doesn't matter what direction they are. I want it on the top or the right-hand side. Or you can do the top or left-hand side. If you're relatively consistent, it's going to look like you have created a highlight across all of them in the same way. And here's a little more realistic color. The camera does blow out a little bit of the color otherwise on something like this while I'm filming, but came out gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps you in your Bible journaling and coloring on your beautiful images. And that's about it. You can watch some other videos here. Join our Facebook group and share some of your colored pencil work. Links are in the description for the supplies, etc. And I will see you guys next week.